so lonely in the far light, listening to the first step on the stairs. All I have to talk to is a way I looked in tonight I thought, you wouldn't think it was an Irish festival at all, there's a lot of empty seats, so I must have upset some people this year, but I spoke to Anne Bowen, our secretary, and I said, do you know what, it looks like a wake in there, she said, well, at least it isn't yours, Flanagan, people have turned up tonight, so, I know, listen, you know, a couple of weeks ago, my co-chair, Kevin, unfortunately, had to step down, it's about six weeks ago, and it threw us into a bit of turmoil, um, we, at that stage we thought we might not even have an Irish festival, we weren't going to have a brochure and it was a major panic and as usual what happened is real friends stepped up to the mark and that's what it's about. It's not about people who like me take all the, the honours, come up here and everyone says oh that's great, you know, he's the chair. It's about those people who never ever come on a stage, never ever get an award and they always step up to the mark and there's a few people, I know I'm going to forget people tonight but the, I'd like to thank a lot of people. Um, there's a guy who's got no Irish connections at all, Gary Gore. He sat down here with his team. And he has really pulled us out of it this year. He's supplied us with vehicles, brought all the, the kit onto the square. Thanks, Gary, for all your help. <laughs> I'm going to have a bit of fun with the brochure now because if you look at the brochure, it's a great job very well done at the last minute. Now, there was two people who did it. You won't believe there was two people because the editor, Sinead Flanagan, uh, brushed out the real worker, Sean Flanagan. Out the... <laughs> well done. But to be truthful, this brochure couldn't have happened at an Irish festival without some serious sponsors stepping up to the mark. And as always, you know, I get a bit of stick about uh, the, the sponsors who I, I bring in, but there's one crowd of sponsors who have always stuck by this festival and they go under the name Diageo, we know them as Guinness and 
thanks to the two lads on the front seat here, they've stepped up to the mark once again this year. They make sure there's an Irish festival and thank you very much for that. I'm going to mention PL Civil Engineering and the O'Connor lads there in the, the room somewhere as well. Thanks for all your help and support again. Um, I'd like to say there's a lot of people do step up to the mark. But there's some that are in it for their own gains, and you know who they are. I'll be brutal about it. You know, they're not here tonight. I wonder why. I don't know why they don't want to come and support what is really the Irish Festival, but the difference is the friends in the Irish Festival are here, the people who count. And on the 16th of March, I'll be walking with an Irish wolfhound in front of me, and I know who's going to be behind me, who's the real Irish Festival. Thank you for coming here tonight. I'm going to ask a president who's related to another president in America. He, he plays it down. He doesn't like bragging about his Dublin roots, but I'm going to bring up our president, Pat Carney. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's taken the trouble turning up tonight. It's fantastic to see everybody. Um, sometimes I don't see people for a year at a time in terms of I see everyone at the festival. I hope you've all had a great year. I hope you're all in great health. Um, my bad news is that I'm struggling with my weight. If anyone can tell me how I can cut down on bread and butter and potatoes, I'd be very grateful. I blame me, all my aunties who gave me bread and butter at a very early age and I could live on that. The, um, the good news, I told you last year, uh, my nephew Gary uh, married uh, John Kennedy's, one of the John Kennedy's daughters and we've got two new carnies in the family, um, one af named after me, Mam, May, May uh, Carney, so we've got, uh, I've now got 13 I think nephews and nieces in that way. And I was thinking uh, on the way in, what, what a different life the kids now, the kids in our own families and the youngest carnies, what, what a different life they've got from when we were brought up and if you were brought over from Ireland like I was from Dublin when I was nine and a half in that way. But what I want them to do is to always remember their Irish heritage, always remember the sacrifices the mums and dads and the grands and the granddads made in terms of if you came from Ireland over here. Always remember the values that are in Irish families. And that will keep us going as an Irish festival through the years. As John said, all the festivals in Manchester are struggling at the moment because of the economic conditions. And it is great that the sponsors have kept with us. But all our festivals are struggling because of the economic conditions. And I am so pleased I don't know where you see all these empty seats, John. I think there's a fantastic big crowd here tonight. And thank you, every one of you, sticking with Irish values, great Irish community we have in Great Manchester, and still one of the largest Irish festivals in the UK, because every year you turn up, you support it, you come here and you come to the parade, and we are very, very grateful and love seeing you. Thank you very much indeed. What Pat doesn't realise, I was selling tickets, they weren't free, and I'm, I'm not sure all the empties have lost out on this. No, seriously, we've got two very, very special guests here tonight. The first guest I'm going to ask on the stage, and he, he's driven all the way across Manchester because he really values uh, the Irish community. He's also a councillor for the, the World Irish Heritage Area of Cheetham Mill, so I'm going to welcome our Lord Mayor, Naeem, I, I'll call him that, I won't give him his full title. Naeem, Lord Mayor, please come on the stage. Festival, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be joining you this evening at the launch of Manchester Irish Festival, which just seems to go from strength to strength. The festival is an occasion when we celebrate the rich culture of the Irish music, theatre, dance, comedy, art, film, literature sport and really everything Irish. It is time when we can promote the warm ties of friendship 
and goodwill that exists between this city and Ireland. We are very proud of our Manchester Irish community who continue to enrich our lives with their wonderful sense of war, hospitality and humour and who give us the opportunity through the festival to enjoy an all-round Irish cultural experience. I wish to thank all the sponsors, the chairs and organizers of the festival who worked so hard to deliver the event which is one of the highlights in the city's event calendar. Here is to a very enjoyable Manchester Irish festival. Thank you. Um, I was surprised when Brian Colomy said I've got someone very special who's going to come over and visit us. And I'm not going to waste much time. I'm going to ask Robert Baller to come on stage. And I know he's known as a great artist, but I've spoke to him over the last couple of days. He's more than just an artist. A very interesting man. So if Robert, can you come on the stage? And I'm going to ask Robert when he's talked to you tonight then to formally open the Irish Festival. Thank you. Robert. The first place, believe it or not, that I went to back then in the 60s was the Astoria Ballroom in Pil Plymouth Grove in Manchester. And I have to say, we had great experiences there. And they had a very unusual uh, scheme going then. And that was, there was accommodation for the musicians over the ballroom. So we would play uh, at the, for the dance then have a few drinks afterwards, uh, maybe more than a few, and repair upstairs to the accommodation. Uh, one really humorous event happened uh, then, and I didn't know that one of the members of the band uh, suffered from uh, sleepwalking. Uh, and this particular night, he woke up, and some of the other members of the band who knew this uh, uh, condition opened his door and opened the fire, uh, or the fire exit and he walked down uh, the fire, step, fire escape stairs into the street outside and about five minutes later woke up in his pyjamas walking along the pavement on Plymouth Grove. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, part of my very early uh, experiences in visiting Manchester. Move on now to the, the formal duties. Uh, I just, I mean, What's, uh, what's going on here is just fantastic. Uh, for example, uh, the festival, I mean, I saw the program. So many things, so many activities. It makes you proud to be Irish to see them all. And then on Friday and on uh, Saturday, on today is Saturday, I, I went to the Irish uh, World Heritage Centre in Cheatham Hill. What a fantastic premises. What a, and, and such ambition. I uh, mean, to believe that that's only the start of it, that it's going to be twice as big. Uh, I just think this is absolutely marvellous. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a, a little funny story, very briefly. Uh, on Friday, I went there at lunchtime, and some of the people there had organised an art project with kids from uh, local schools. And uh, after uh, the, the kind of, there were a few speeches, and the kids were complimented and everything, uh, the teacher said they could uh, come and talk to me. So I was surrounded by all these kids asking questions about art and things like that. But then I noticed I was surrounded mostly by little boys and they all they only all had one question. Did I know Seamus? Now, I noticed that doesn't have much of a reaction in the audience because I think you'd have to be under 10 or certainly under 12 to know who Seamus is. But I can tell you Seamus is one of the most famous professional wrestlers in the world today. And all these kids look at TV and look at wrestling. And I was in the unique situation, because like you, I mean, normally speaking, I wouldn't have had a clue who Seamus was. But my son uh, used to go to the same gym in Dublin that Seamus went to before he went to America. So I was able to say to these kids, uh, 
I don't know Seamus, but he's a great friend of my son's. And uh, I didn't have to say any more. They thought I was the greatest guy on the planet, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and again, here we have uh, Seamus, famous Seamus, uh, an Irish person in America now, uh, at the top of, of, of his career. Uh, for some reason, we seem to be very good at doing that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, the, what, we're, what we're really uh, marking tonight is this festival, and, the, uh, and I take great pleasure, and certainly it's a great honor for me to formally launch the uh, 2014 Manchester Irish Festival. Thank you. Garamila Mahathir. Thank you very much, Robert Baller. Hello, everybody. Everybody all right? Good, good. Uh, I'd just like to thank the organizers for inviting me down to close up tonight. Uh, I'm going to sing you a few songs. Uh, first of all, I'm going to sing a song from Les Mis, if that's all right. Uh, it's called Bring Him Home. Give me a minute to set up and we'll play you some proper music now. You've heard this song uh, once before tonight, but uh, I'm sure you won't mind hearing it again. It's called The Fields of Athenry. Uh, if you know the words, sing along, enjoy yourselves. Have you enjoyed tonight? Good, good.
was all alone <sighs> With a broken heart and a ticket home And I asked you, friend, what's a fellow When her hair is black and her eyes are blue Nothing like that going Enjoy the rest of the Manchester Irish Festival. Yeah. 